welcome back to the keep on growing channel i am so excited to be making this video because in today's video i will be sharing my first month officially self-employed i can't even believe that those words are coming out of my mouth if you are a fellow lpc associate or lpc you understand you know why this is so exciting the fact that I am officially self-employed, owner of my own business as a virtual therapist. You're going to be watching in this video how I just progressively get happier and just more excited because as the days go by, it starts to really sink in. But this gets to be my life now. Like when we're in grad school, I feel like we just think we're gonna be in grad school forever and it feels like there's no end in sight. So to be in that place where I'm getting to do what I want. But I'm going to be showing you and telling you what it has been like for me this first month working on my own. So yeah, if you're new to my channel, hit that subscribe button, like this video, comment, hit that notification bell. All of these things help support my channel so that I can keep creating videos for you all. Okay, everyone, let's go ahead and get started with this video. Good morning everyone, welcome back to my channel, welcome back to a new video. So it is really early this morning, it is 7.43 and I mean early for me. And today is my first day working in my private practice, self-employed. I cannot believe it, I'm so excited. So being my own boss, I decided to start this morning the way that I wanted to and that is to go for a walk before I get any work done and i usually don't get ready whenever i'm going for a walk so no makeup have my emotional support water bottle of course always <laughs> to stay hydrated and then i also have a playlist that i'm going to be listening to i feel like listening to music today sometimes i feel like listening to a podcast so i'm gonna go ahead and go to one of my local parks bring you all along thank you so much for watching this video
today is Tuesday and it's actually already 3.34, so it's a little late in the afternoon. So this morning just consisted of me doing some notes. Um, I ended up going out and running some errands and I had a little bit of a self-care morning, which was really fun. I ended up going to Barnes & Noble, as you all saw. And I ended up just picking out some books to read for fun because that's something that I have been trying to get back into because post-grad, honestly, it has just been a struggle to read for fun. I find that it's so much easier for me to read self-help type of books or books where I feel like I'm learning some type of information, which is really great, but sometimes we also just need to do things for fun. And so I've been trying to gradually get back to that and I feel like a good gateway into that has been through graphic novels. I love me a good graphic novel. It's just so great. I feel like my mind doesn't have to overextend itself to try to imagine what I'm usually trying to read. I can just see the beautiful images and illustrations. And it's just a good relaxing time for me. And so when I got back, I felt a little bit like foggy brain. Like I had so many things on my mind that I wanted to do. And I knew that I had to write them all down because even though I have everything on my monthly calendar for content. I really like writing down my daily to-dos and I didn't end up doing it this morning because I didn't really think that I had a lot of things planned and the more as the day progressed, I realized that there were things that I really did want to get done. So I ended up writing down client notes. I checked that off because that's done film an IG story and that's something that I ended up already doing also. So basically the post that I ended up sharing today was about teletherapy services. Let me get it. So this is a post right here that I ended up sharing on Instagram. And so I ended up making a story, you know, just asking potential clients or anyone who was watching my Instagram story to ask me questions about therapy because sometimes we may want to start therapy, but there may be, you know, some unanswered questions that we would just like to know about. I did that, I always love answering questions. I feel like it's super fun. And then I also ended up starting a TikTok, which is something that I had been wanting to do. Like I knew that I needed to do it, that I wanted to do it, but the only thing hindering me and stopping me was me thinking, oh, I'm not gonna be good at it. It's just too much for me. And so I had to really stop myself today and say, mm-mm. Like that's not gonna fly. That's not something that I would be okay with my client saying about themselves or a friend saying about themselves. So I should not be saying that about myself. So I just did the thing today, literally while I was buying groceries, I was like, let me just open up TikTok and start it. And I'm really glad I did. I have a bunch of content already saved that I've shared on Instagram, so now I can just go ahead and upload it on to TikTok. One of the main reasons why I wanted to start that just for business purposes is because the TikTok algorithm is unmatched. I've been on YouTube for three years and on Instagram and just TikTok knows, you know what I mean? If you've been on TikTok, you also know the algorithm works really great. So we'll see, hopefully I get connected with my ideal clients, just an extra social media platform to be on, but we'll see how it goes. Thankfully I have things saved, so I uploaded two videos today and I'll probably take it like that for the next couple of days where I'll upload like two videos until I end up running out. Then I'll just post whenever I post on Instagram. And next on the list was to keep filming, which I am doing. And that is pretty much it for today. I think I'm good on content and the things that I wanted to do with social media today. I just want to take some time to rest after. So some of the things that I ended up picking up at Barnes & Noble were these two books. Like I said, I love reading graphic novels, so I told myself Tonight, I'm going to unplug from social media because my life has been very social media heavy right now because of work and trying to market my business and things like that. So I'm just going to turn off notifications on my phone for about one to two hours and just take some time to read. So I ended up getting the Tea Dragon Society, which is this one right here. And then I ended up getting Aquacorn Cove and they're all by the same author. I personally love being on booktube and I've always loved watching booktubers like people who recommend books and read books on YouTube because I never felt like I had the time to read during grad school so I would just sit and watch someone talk about the book 
that they're reading and so i feel like i have a forever list of books that i would really like to read and get into and so these two were on my list for a while and then i ended up getting this cute little card because one of my best friends is having a baby shower soon let me turn down the brightness really quick there we go isn't it so cute so happy and excited for hers and then i also ended up getting this package delivered there's a book in here that i ordered another graphic novel and also i think some glasses i ended up ordering some blue light glasses because the ones that i have they've just always been a little bit uncomfortable so i finally decided you know what but this is something that i really do need and that has helped me so much because a large portion of my job because i am a virtual therapist is basically revolving around being online being on my computer so there's a certain point to when you've been online um, for the week where your eyes are just dead let's go ahead and open it together okay so let's go ahead and open this Okay, it looks like I ended up getting the book only in this package, so the glasses must be on their way. So pretty. So this is the second graphic novel that I ended up getting. I'll give you the sneak peek of what it looks like and I just won't look. Really fun. I have plenty of really cute books to read tonight. Very excited. When lights go out You're in my mind I close my eyes So it's just you and I And I tell myself You'll be back again Stars are aligned, we will dance in the meadow on our favorite place when spring is coming. about joining YouTube, like as a therapist in school, we're trained to be very risk at first. So anything that makes you show up as your true authentic self or you wanting to show your true authentic self is honestly frowned upon. You have to be blank slate. You have to be someone who, you know, you're just there as the expert to guide them. They don't need to know anything about your business. They don't need to know anything about your life. When I was hearing like some people, you know, DMing me about like, oh, so like, yeah, I don't tell my clients or I don't do this or I don't do that, whatever. I started feeling fear and I was like, what the fuck? Like, I already made my decision. I'm not going to let other people's opinions about what I should or shouldn't do. And I'm not going to fear the licensing board because as long as you are acting ethically, you are not sharing confidential information about your client but being scared of it like that's just gonna never allow you to step into a creative outlet that could be beautiful for you hey everyone good morning so today let me let me catch y'all up on what day it is it's april 27th so it's almost the end of the month and it is 9 30 a.m sorry if my camera ends up changing but i ended up having to delete some footage really quick because my memory card was 
full. So I feel like something that you're going to be noticing in my vlogs and specifically even just the clips in this video is that I progressively get happier. I progressively just show my personality more and I think that the biggest contributing factor to that is because I am fully self-employed now and I work for myself and I get to be myself and that's something that I've been reflecting a lot on this month and just how much pressure goes into sometimes working for someone else and feeling like you have to embody a certain image that isn't really yours. I could also really tell in my tone of voice and just the way I would talk, like my professional, you know, quote unquote, my professional voice versus when I was myself with my clients. This week I have five clients scheduled. So this is the first week that I'm looking at that's actually looking closer, you know, to what I would like. But something else that I've also been reflecting on is how crazy it is, you guys, that with that caseload alone this week, I am making the same amount of money that I would have been making at the practice where I was working. And that is so sad, so sad. Me and my husband have talked about this so many times. It's just so sad to me how much LPC associates are exploited, how much our work is exploited. And I feel like in the mental health field, a lot of employers and just the systems in place, we don't like to call it exploitation, right? Cause that doesn't sound pretty but that's what it is. And so something that was really important for me was to prioritize, you know, my own mental health. And so I knew that, you know, this first year, I wanted to just kind of slow down, keep prioritizing my own self-care and mental health needs while doing what I loved. And that meant, you know, not getting paid for my work well. But I also want to say that I couldn't just come on here and say that because my boss ended up finding my YouTube channel and I know that they were watching it. So there was that like weird pressure also that I just didn't feel like I could fully be myself. So now that I'm working for myself, I just want to kind of like reintroduce myself a little bit. And I, I wish that it wasn't like that, you know, that I could have just been brave enough to to be myself with all of that going on, but I'm also talking to other LPC associates and counselors in training, so I know you all get it. I know you all understand what that must feel like. All of the layers, right? Like y'all know, y'all y'all feel me, y'all know. So I feel like a huge weight has been lifted off my shoulders and all I can say is now that I'm working for myself, you're going to see more of my personality, which I feel like it shows more on my main channel just because I get to disconnect from work things. But now that my work also includes getting to be my authentic self, of course, with healthy boundaries in place because we're online. And so I've had to establish my own healthy boundaries, what I'm okay saying, not saying of clients were to watch my videos, you know, and I do the same thing on my main channel. I don't share everything about myself, but I do think that we're able to show up in these spaces and social media, especially if we're, you know, virtual counselors and that's what we're doing, we're virtual therapists. It's completely normal to show up in these spaces, you know, and to just do so with healthy boundaries in the same way that we would do, you know, in person, because someone could be completely unethical in person as well. The only difference on social media is that you're talking to a larger audience, right? Instead of just maybe the people that you work with, but it's still people who are interacting with you. And if you're someone who acts unethically, you're going to do that regardless of your in-person or telehealth. And I was listening to Monica's podcast this morning. Hold on, let me just take a sip of my coffee because it smells really good. So yes, I was listening to Monica's podcast and I loved that she touched on this, you know, that there's always going to be people that disagree with therapists being on social media, you know, and doing that, but that is the world that we live in now and the counseling field is going to be ever evolving. So I just want to get this message across, you know, to anyone who is in my field watching this and who is thinking, you know, I want to be on social media and network, promote my business, create community, all of these things that social media can be great for. I just want to encourage you to go for it. As long as you have healthy boundaries in place, do the things that you want to do. I know when I was in grad school, I was so afraid, you guys. And again, Monica touches on this on her podcast where we're just taught to be so afraid of the board. In reality, if you go and look at the board, like a lot 
lot of these people are business people aside from being a part of the Texas State Board. And even the Texas State Board has social media. They're on YouTube. We learned so many great things in grad school, you guys, but there's also a lot of unlearning because yes, we're getting an education to do the things that we want to do, but don't let that education completely become your personality and who you are you know it's a great foundation but you get to add your own sazon your own spice to the way that you counsel and your clients are going to come to you yes because of the knowledge you have obviously but coupled with them connecting with you you know as your authentic self so anyways those are just some of my morning thoughts so far i am currently watching a new drama it's called falling into your smile so i'm watching that and then I have my client session at 11. And I'm going to be doing some progress notes after that, making a post on social media. So that's something that I try to do weekly, continuing to just post on Instagram, follow my little content monthly planner. That's something that I'm still doing. So I thought I would just check in for a little bit, but I will go ahead and talk to you all a little bit later. I hope you're fine, but I won't lie. I still miss you so much, but I don't hold grudge. So I am about to head out to my first ever speaking engagement and <laughs> what a way to end the month. Honestly, public speaking has always made me feel extra anxious. It's reminding me of when I was back in grad school and I used to literally black out um, when I would give presentations. And so many times I've been asking myself, you know, why did we say yes to doing this? And I keep going back to the fact that it's going to feel so good to connect with other women in my community, talk about mental health, share what I do, and just network and build those connections. And so I'm trying to remind myself of that. And I thought I would share with you all what I'm taking. This is my first time ever doing a speaking engagement. So I made myself some notes here <laughs> a lot of notes and i probably won't even get into all of this like i just told myself we're not gonna over prepare you know we're just gonna think up of some ideas of what we want to talk about and just go with the flow you know have a nice time i tend to do better when i just i don't want to say wing it but when i'm just you know naturally myself so i'm taking this i am taking my emotional support water bottle because it's gonna be an outdoor event and so some of the things that i did to also eat my public speaking anxiety is dress comfortably. So I'm wearing something that makes me feel beautiful, comfortable, and I'm also wearing my hair up because I live in South Texas and we're not self-sabotaging ourselves today, my friends. I already know that if I don't wear my hair up, I'm going to regret it because we're gonna be outdoors. It's a really beautiful place, but nonetheless, it is outdoors. And I already know I'm gonna be sweaty because I'm nervous and the humidity and the heat. So no, we, we were kind to ourselves today and wise and I wore my hair up and on my way over, I'm gonna be listening to some nice, relaxing Taylor Swift music. Just create a nice, relaxing environment. And so yeah, I thought I would talk to you all a little bit about how I'm feeling honestly, right? Because I don't know how I come off, but I, I tend to hear a lot from family members or friends that I seem confident. I'm like, y'all, no. <laughs> and if I do seem so, I have to work extremely hard at it. And so I'm just going to try to be myself, my authentic self as a therapist, just chill and have some good conversations. That's, that's what my inner dialogue 
is like right now. I'm trying to be kind to myself and just go and have a nice time. Very, very proud of the me that is talking right now. I'm very proud. So I will come back and debrief when, when I get back. So being me, I did write down some of the things that I wanted to talk to you all about and just summarize now that you've watched my video and you've gotten to see a couple, you know, days throughout my month. The next couple of things that I have planned to end this month on is going to be seeing therapy clients, also getting to meet with someone for consultation who is looking for guidance as an LPC associate starting their private practice. So if that's something that you want to do, I wanted to hold off on accepting consultations for that until I was situated and ready to go. So if that's something that you'd like to work on together, get all the resources, I mean like I have a step-by-step -step guide for you, you can book your session on my website and that's down in my description box or you can also go to this link right here and directly book your consultation so we can work together but yeah so that's something that i'm going to be working on very exciting did not ever think that i would be doing something like this so it just means so much i just want to see those of us who dream of doing this doing what we love you know what i mean i'm just sick and tired of seeing LPC associates exploited and overworked. Right, I've been over it for a long time, but it's just very exciting to be able to do something and to help. The promise that I made to myself was that as soon as I could, I would make changes to make a better life for myself and set the tone, you know, for for other P LPC associates who are watching, you know, to know that we can make changes in our career field to better things for ourselves to know our own worth you know what i mean you know it's not about being like sleazy when it comes to business or disingenuous and things like that because i feel like that tends to be our fear but we can do business in a way that's ethical that's kind and respectful to our clients while also being that way for ourselves and respecting the work ethic and the effort that we put into our works. It's actually really interesting because I've seen so many TikToks of people in private practice saying, you know, I left my nine to five to do my private practice and now I'm over here working 24 seven. And I wanted to talk about that because it can happen, you know, just because you're going to be working private practice in your own business doesn't mean that you're going to automatically get this life where you will be working less, you have to create that for yourself, you know? So it involves us setting healthy boundaries. And so for example, for me, there's things that I have to say no to as well as a therapist. So I don't say yes to everyone who reaches out to me and says, you know, can we talk? Because there's just not enough time in a day and if I do that, then I don't get to do this and I don't get to see my family and hang out with friends. You know, I don't get to do those other things. So sometimes you have to say no to some things and you don't have to say no every single month. You know, maybe I have another month where I focus a little bit more on interacting with others, but that's just not where I am right now. My main focus is, you know, building my business, seeing my clients, YouTube, which is also a part of my business now. So yes, all this to say, setting those healthy boundaries for yourself ahead of time is so important. That way you can just communicate that to your clients or to anyone else. So yeah, those are some of the things that I wanted to talk about. If you have any questions, be sure to leave them in the comment section. I would love to chat with all of you. Thank you so much for your support, for being here. And I truly hope that these videos continue to be helpful for you. Thank you so much for watching everyone. Take care and I will catch you in my next video. Bye.